All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. This Thursday installment of Purveyors of Health every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we're also doing these now on Tuesdays. We have uh, group shares on Tuesday, same time. So thanks to Mallory for helping me put these together. And also thanks to Mark for helping facilitate this as well. And all of you guys, thank you for all being here and sharing in this community. This is a group collective. Um, today, I'm very honored. We are very honored to have our friend Karen Peterson here. <laughs> Karen is a professional yoga instructor and <laughs> an all around amazing person, amazing friend to the community here in the health world. And she's got an amazing story. I don't even know where to begin, but I would just like to bring her on right now. Karen, are you out there? Hi, friends. Hey. I'm here. So, How? What's going on? Oh, I'm excited to be here. I'm so happy to be here after your Tuesday one. I was like so lit up with everybody's sharing. And, you know, I really feel like, wow, th this is like my family. This is like my soul family. These are the people I should be with, you know, that I've always longed to find. Right. Like um, it's just like coming home. You know, I, I just love it. I love everybody in this community and the kindness and the, the generous hearts and how they just want to help earth and, and be of service. And that's really what I'm all about is being of maximum service, you know, to my creator and, and, um, and to my fellows. So you guys are definitely my fellows. You're definitely my kind of people. And I'm honored to be here, like honored. So let's that that's that's such an honor to have you here, Karen, really, you're a real inspiration to so many of us, myself, very much included and um so you're you're living in uh british columbia right is that that's where yeah. you're from Nor North yeah call me call canada. me canada call me canada <laughs> over here <laughs> that good huh canada the lockdown center of the world so yeah. so um tell us a little bit about you know how things went for you how you ended up where you are now in life and where things started off either from a, a near distance a near past, or you can even go as far back as you are, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Mm -hmm. Your story is so powerful. I want everybody to hear it. Okay. Well, I know, I don't know how much time we have. I'll try to, you know, give it like what it was like, what happened and what it's like now. Um, so what it was like, I was born in Ontario. Um, I'm an identical mirror image twin and um, born to military father um, really wasn't uh, wanted. So that was, you know, your, yeah, I've, I've looked at all the, you know, levels of, of um, childhood neglect and that kind of thing. But basically, I, um, I always I, w I was born different, I was born feeling like I didn't fit in, you know what I mean? Like, even as a small child, even though I had a twin sister, we could be in a room full of people, and I still felt all alone. There was just something different about me. Um, yeah, I just didn't fit. And it was really apparent that I didn't belong. The people called me the cold prickly and my sister was the warm fuzzy. And, and, uh, so that told me as a child that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't lo lovable, you know? So th then I took that role on to just be the angry kid and, and, uh, not be touched and not be hugged and not all those things that make us feel whole. But, um, I had some childhood trauma that happened, um, when I was quite young and uh, you know, what happened was I, I, I found alcohol, you know, I found alcohol at 11 years old and, um, and it made me not feel, you know, the, the, from the very first time I, I drank, I didn't drink like other people. I drank to get drunk. I drank for the effect. I drank to numb out and, and to, uh, to get rid of my shame and my guilt and, and all that. And, um, you know, shortly after I picked up drugs and it was, that was, I was off and running, you know what I mean? Like as a young child, um, I was alcoholic from the very beginning and, uh, you know, I, I, I did whatever it took to get alcohol. Um, and I, you know, I, I hung out with people that I shouldn't have been hanging out with and, you know, things that, 
you would think are were important just weren't important anymore so um that was pretty much my life all my teens were like what you know just just a mess but because you're young people are like oh you're just partying you're you know partying for me it was never fun like I did not have fun it wasn't fun for me I um I wanted to die like I wanted to die I can't remember taking a sober breath for many many years um and you know I worked in restaurants so that I could hide my alcoholism you know so I could get away with it and that's kind of how I, I just was in survival mode really just surviving and, uh, you know, alcohol and drugs showed me some things that I never wanted to see. And it allowed me to do some things I never wanted to do. And, and I can tell you, I was in a lot of trouble all the time. And I made really poor choices. And I just didn't give a shit. I didn't give a shit about myself. I hated myself. I, you know, I thought I was a piece of shit. So I, my vibration was of the lower companion type vibration and that's what I attracted was more lower companions and I, I found people that drank and used like me and um, I can tell you that it was a lot of darkness it was uh, there was a lot of dark times and um, and you know and I did some things that I I have deep regret for but I also know today uh, a level of forgiveness that I've been granted so um, I try not to dwell in the past but really how it came to ahead there was um you know I had a couple really insane abusive marriages really nuts um crazy stuff really crazy stuff and you know eventually I just I couldn't keep a job I my addiction was just too strong and I didn't care about anything but using and and drinking and staying loaded you know I I I yeah I I had to drink to forget about what I did when I was drinking and um and I was just slowly spinning out. I had, uh, I was 97 pounds and um, I was so paranoid. I couldn't leave, uh, I couldn't leave, I couldn't go outside. I was so paranoid. I would just have a cab driver bring me um, bottles of vodka and cigarettes and whatever. And, you know, different dealers come through to bring me what I needed for the day. And at the end of the road, um, I just had a seizure, like a, a drug induced seizure. I ended up in the hospital and that's where it all kind of came to a, a halt. I was 34 at the time and um, they called my parents who I, you know, hadn't seen for a very long time because I had, you know, completely destroyed every relationship that I, that, that I ever had. I was all alone. Like I didn't have one single friend, not one friend. I can tell you not one single friend right I had alienated myself from everyone and uh, of course I did horrible things to people and um, I didn't give a shit who I hurt right like I came to take you know and so in this hospital um, my parents came um, the doctors said that I probably had maybe a few weeks left if I was released and went back to living the way I was living they offered me uh, detox and treatment and I said I would go, you know, and it's not because I thought that I, I never before thought that I could live any other way. I never had a desire to get sober or to be sober because I didn't know I was an alcoholic. I didn't know I was a drug addict. What I thought was that I was crazy. I thought I was absolutely crazy and uh, I couldn't understand why when I started drinking, I couldn't stop. And uh, I, I had, I'd rather let men beat on me and cut my body up than feel my feelings. I just, I had no coping skills and I was like a eight year old in a 34 year old's body and with no idea how to behave and how to live life on life's terms. So I went to detox and then I went to a treatment center and um, some magic happened at that treatment center. I was about 60 days clean and sober and I can tell you it was excruciating. You know, I hadn't draw, I hadn't had a sober breath in 20 something years. And I was thawing out from, you know, just, oh, it's like having frostbite. It's so painful. You're just, it's just awful. And, um, but anyway, so I was, I went to my treatment room. I went to sleep. And when I woke up, you know, the sun was shining in the room it was just glorious, all the sunlight and warmth. And I, and I sat up in my treatment bed and I looked across the room and I came face to face with my creator. 
right? When I say my creator, I don't mean like God from the Bible or anything like that. I mean like all encompassing love, but in a form, formless, but formed. And I just was filled with rage. He was knitting. He was like knitting away, looking down and knitting. I'm, I just got up and I started screaming, yelling like profanity and horrible things like screaming like I'm always going to be sick I'm going to leave here I'm going to relapse I'm going to die like I'm never going to get my kids back like you you know you've never helped me why did you let all these things happen to me like I just was losing it on this god right and no matter what I was saying and screaming and yelling and raging he just wouldn't look up from what he was doing still knitting and when I finally looked at what he was knitting out of his knitting needles just started spilling this fabric this tapestry started pouring out of his needles and filling the whole room with this wild um all these colors like the most colors i've ever seen in my life just pouring into the room and when it all came into focus what he was knitting was my life as a sober woman right as a sober being and i saw it all laid out before me that i could have a different life that i didn't have to live the way i was living that i could be saved and set free and you know uh, from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body i could be restored right so that experience that i had i like to call it a spiritual awakening i guess but um yeah i i and then I just became like captain recovery in the treatment center. I just like wanted to learn everything and just be the best I could be. And, and it was, it was a, I was there for, you know, four and a half months and it was, it was what I needed, you know, it was what I needed. They taught me how to make a bed first thing in the morning. They taught me how to take care of myself. It was just, it was really wild, but anyway, so we did yoga in that treatment center. That's how I found yoga. The first time I did Savasana, I cried my eyes out. I bawled my eyes out and I was like, what is, what, what is this? I need this more and more and more. And then I got out of treatment and I started, you know, chasing yoga like I used to chase drugs, really. And I went to my first yoga teacher training um, that my community paid for me to go because I was, you know, I, I went through all these hoops basically I was poor and I'm like I had no I had nothing when I got out of treatment nothing right not even a driver's license so anyway I took that teacher training and then I opened the first ever yoga uh, studio in my town a yoga and, and fitness studio and um, and in the town that I live in it's like, like you know like a lot of cowboys it's it's um, I don't want to say rednecks because you know it, but it's it's not there there wasn't a lot of like spiritual people or people that even really did yoga so I offered to teach yoga for free for six months in my town to sort of get because I just moved there and nobody knew me and you know they don't like outsiders and it's really clicky and stuff so so yeah I, I did yoga for free for six months for the community and I teach to like one person two people four people and then all of a sudden you know 20 people 30 people and built a really amazing following that they've become my family like they're amazing human beings right amazing and we've grown up together and woken up together and you know i just kept planting those seeds of consciousness and that's pretty much what i've done in my recovery is and and you know worked my 12 steps and and um healed from my past right but like I'm living a life today that at one time I know I never deserved, you know, a hundred percent, but you know, the, the grace of my creator, the forgiveness that I've received from, you know, the people that I hurt, like, like I said, I came to take, but I really stay here to give, you know what I mean? That's what my whole life is based on today is, is giving back, like to pay the debts back that, that, you know, that I made such a mess of my life, but I can use my gifts now to, to pay it forward. So, and help others, right. Help others recover from whatever they need so anyways yeah basically that was what went on then natalie came into my life i don't know if you know natalie but she hit me up on instagram with this whole ultimate lifestyle transformation that was in december and i was like having some stomach things going on and all kinds of i was i was stressed out because my studio had been shut down for the second time i'm now in the third shutdown of um this whole lockdown stuff so I was stressed, you know, about finances and stressed about my, my business and thinking I'm just a one trick pony. Like that's all I've ever done in recovery is teach yoga and fitness. So I was terrified. Like, what am I going to do? How, like, am I going to have to get a job? Like, what does this look like? Oh my God. 
And then I said, I'd take a look at what she sent me. I looked at it. I was like, I've never done network marketing or multi-level marketing or whatever you call it, but I liked it. I was like, I was like, I'm into like trying the transformation. So I committed to doing the 30 day transformation. I asked like six of my best friends here that are also my instructors at the studio to do it with me. They were like, sure, we're down. And we did it. And it was life changing, like life changing, you know, because I thought it was pretty healthy before because I teach like four to six classes a day, you know, but I, I wasn't healthy with my food or my diet. I was drinking like, you know, an extra large triple triple at five 30 in the morning. The first thing I put in my gut every day was this coffee, sugar, cream. And, um, and, you know, I kind of ate whatever I wanted. Cause I'm like, well, I work out for a living. So, you know, and I'd never cared about organics. Cause I, you know, I was like, though, that's for rich people. And, you know, as long as I'm not drinking and drugging, who gives a shit if I'm not eating organic, I'm not drinking bleach anymore. And I'm not, I don't have a needle in my arm. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing all right. You know, who cares about the organic stuff? But I didn't realize any, I was ignorant, you know, I was completely ignorant to, to what's going on inside of me. Right. And so I really stuck to the plan. The, I did the accelerated program and I stuck to it Bible um, I lost 19 pounds and just, it was, it was not even about the weight. I could give two shits about the weight. I don't care about that. It's, it's about what I gained, right? Like, yeah, I, I can't even explain or, or try to put into words the clarity that I received from cleaning out my gut, from getting rid of the toxins and the impurities and the glyphosate and all that stuff. What happened for me was that, like, I came alive in a new way the whole world looked different. Like, like, I don't know if you ever like, have done psychedelics, but you know how the world looks very alive and the, the trees are talking to you and the grass is weaving and you're part of it all. And it's like, that's what it was like for me, but without, you know, the, the without the psychic shift of psychedelics, but yeah. you know, it was like a good trip, a good sober, clean trip, but I'm like seeing things differently and I'm, and I'm sleeping better. And, um, I just was like, like lit. I'm like, I cannot believe that I feel this good. Like I'd wake up every day waiting for it to go away. Right. I'm like, okay, this is too good to be true. You know, we're conditioned to believe that if something's really great or, you know, it's going to run out or it's going to be taken away from us. The ego always slips in and says like, well, you did so well, you deserved a treat. Or, you know, even if you think about it when we were little kids and, oh, if you behave, here's your candy, here's your lollipop, here's your, you know, that's, conditioning right and um and yeah I never I never cheated I didn't I didn't do a single thing I, I had a really tough uh, month because I, um one of my best friends passed away from alcoholism she drank herself to death uh over Christmas and um and it was a really tough time um a really tough time she was only 36 years old and she has two sons and you know um I just I I again come to gratitude that I made it out of that life you know like I I I used to question like, why did, why me? Like, why did I make it out of that, that life? Right. When only 3% of us make it 97% of alcoholics and addicts will jails, institutions or death. Right. So I'm in that 3%. Why me? But now that my clarity is so profound, my meditations are so much more powerful and my downloads that I'm receiving are so clear. I see today. Why me? Right. Because I'm here to, awaken the rest of humanity i'm here to show others that they can make it too i'm here to you know walk and journey alongside my fellow man shoulder to shoulder as we commence to freedom you know in the sunlight of the spirit right it's like i see now that i'm not a one trick pony that i have many gifts and many skills and many talents and i want to share them with the world and and in in joining perium and becoming a brand partner i was able to reach so many more people, especially people in recovery, right? Like I think the first 40 people that I signed um, are in recovery, right? Like, I don't know. It's kind of like the, this second key to our healing, you know, once we clean out the, because drugs and alcohol are just a symptom of our disease, just a symptom, right? What we suffer from is a spiritual malady. And a lot of humans do not just drug addicts, but a spiritual malady, which if you look up spiritual in the dictionary, it says soul, you look up malady, it says sickness. So what we have is a soul sickness, right? I have this big hole that can only be filled by God, by my creator. 
but instead I was trying to fill it with ego and men and shopping and food and all the things, right? All the things that we think will give us temporary comfort for a much deeper um, ache, a deep wound, right? And um, so basically now that I have this tool, this new design for living, this new blueprint for living, which is Perium and the lifestyle that is Perium, um, it's opened me up to so many more human beings that are like me you know what I mean not no I don't mean like me like in recovery I mean like you guys like like Mallory and 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 Stefan and uh you know all the people that I've met in this in this um Perium family it's like holy shit like like where you been all my life because you're everyone that speaks I'm like yes yes oh my god yes like it's just, yeah, I, I feel finally like the last little puzzle piece has clicked, you know, like they say, I'm six and a half years sober now, right? But they say the first year is very physical and the second year is very emotional. The third year is spiritual and the fourth year is optional because now you have the tools, you know, and the spiritual principles and the steps to make choices you know to make choices and then years five through ten you basically have a big puzzle and all the pieces are scattered everywhere and you're turning over pieces and kind of deciding which pieces you want to place in this new picture that is you right and then you're taking out ones that are no longer serving you know that godlike human that you're trying to build right because we as much as i have a creator right i am i am the creator as well a conscious creator of my reality and I believe that I'm the gracious host for my experiences. So I want my experiences to be rich, you know, like I believe that my mindset is one of abundance and that it's about my inner riches, not my monetary things or possessions. I, all I need is less because I inside me is a well, like a beautiful well, and it's ready to be, you know, sprung forth with, with all the gifts and all the goods and all the things right like and today I know that I'm worthy and that I'm deserving of a good life a, a fucking great life actually and um and it's up to me to host my experiences and to be fearless in in my pursuit of of fulfilling my dreams right which is to live free to be free free from self free from ego you know, to quiet the ego, to shrink the ego and grow my awareness. And now that I've stepped out of ignorance um, and into this incredible life of holistic living and plant-based living and released my attachment to meat, sugar, caffeine, dairy, like I feel way more connected to the earth and to um, other humans like I, I finally feel like I have somewhere to fit in like I'm not on the outside looking in anymore that I that I belong you know because now I see when I look in the eyes of someone else that they are me and I am them and we're just one you know we're just one and everybody is my mirror and everybody is my teacher and and you know we're all here on this spiritual ladder right this beautiful golden bright spiritual ladder and it really doesn't matter which rung any of us are on because there's only two ways to look we look up to see who's looking down to help us and we look down to see who's reaching up for us to help right and that's all it is give and receive give and receive give and receive so again i in three months i i hit blue diamond if you guys are in the brand partner thing like i i didn't know what it meant but it's a pretty awesome thing. <laughs> like it's pretty awesome because now I've seen that it's actually more challenging to receive that, um, in that fast of a time, I guess. But I can tell you that really what it, what the, the tool and the trick and the key for me was, was just being myself, right? Like we don't have to follow any format. We don't have to, we don't have to like script anything like we just get to be ourselves and that's how we find our people that's how we're attracting our tribe like-minded people because we're, we're, we're there's no masks Ugh, masks there's no masks there's no you know it's just us being exactly who we are and then the right people fall into place you know so it happens super organically but I think I get it now. I think I get how it kind of works now, right? Because in order for you to advance, you have to make sure you have people under you that are 
you know, equally wanting to advance so that you get all your little chess pieces in place and whatever. But I love it. I'm like, I'm down for it. And I'm telling you right now, it's been saving me with my studio being shut down. The um, checks from Purium are what's paying my studio rent. Like I'm paying rent for a studio I can't operate in. I would never be able to keep that up. I would lose everything if I didn't have found Purium. So I thank my creator that it, it manifested into my life. And I thank Angelo for being one of the first people that reached out to me when I joined Purium and sent me rad voice notes. And I was like, that's my brother and Mallory. She's my sister. And um, we're just one big family. And if I haven't met you yet, you're just brothers and sisters I haven't met yet. You know, I don't have to know you to love you. So that's pretty much, you know, where I'm at. That's such a wonderful story, Karen. And it, and it's a real story. It's not like, it's not some, it's not something you could even make up. It's so beautiful. And um, I, I have so many questions and thoughts of, things I would love to ask, um, but a few I wanted to ask. You are so articulate. The way you speak, you know, you, you have a gift of gab. You are, you are very articulate. And so that's not just something somebody, you know, comes out of sobriety and has. That must have been something I'm thinking that you had from long ago. Like you must have been surrounded by people who are with education or- oh, one big boy. Yeah. Um, Hello, big boy. Um, hey, big boy. So, so I'm just curious because when I listen to you talk, um, that's one of the things I think is so impressed. I'm so impressed with, with you is how you can convey your message. People have great stories, but your, your story, you, you articulate it so powerfully. I'd like to know mm. more about that. Yeah. But I can tell you though, for sure, I was not ever around educated people. Like, it's nothing to do with that. I'll, I'll tell you what I believe it is because, you know, again, I don't feel like when you say that to me, I'm like, what? He's talking about me? Like, that's crazy, crazy talk, right? But what I think it's from, what I do believe it's from is that before I speak to anybody or, or before I even open my mouth, I invite my creator. Um, my creator's a gentleman. He likes to be invited. So I make sure to invite him. And then I ask that my creator speaks through me. You know what I mean? Even how I teach my classes, I ask my creator to teach the class for me, right? So I don't think that it's me necessarily. I, I believe it's my guides, my angels, my creator that is giving me the a message that may carry some depth and weight that can land with somebody that may feel like, you know, they, they need to hear what I have to say, right? Because I can tell you, you know, for, for 34 years, nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. Nobody. Right. And, um, I guess I just stopped talking for a long time. Right. So I got a lot to say now. So that that's beautifully articulated that your creator speaks through you. I feel that way. Also myself, I had some background. Uh, I went to college, um, in and studied communication so i was put into front of a class scared to death to talk to people and over time like forced to speak and i, mm. and I agree with you though i didn't really hone it until i started to find spirituality and uh and start to release some of the you know self-doubts and just be my authentic self more um but what about people out there who are like well that's all great Karen, but like, I don't have a yoga community to bring into like a business like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody like, how can I do this? What mm -hmm. would you say to people like that? Yeah. So again, like not everybody that we have brought in is from the yoga studio or from uh, um, recovery, right? We have a lot of people that we, we gathered from Instagram. You know what I mean? Instagram is an incredible tool, an incredible platform. And like again you make stories like make stories and be yourself and and show up as your true raw you know nothing rehearsed just totally being yourself because the universe picks up on that right and the universe needs crystal clear direction and asks right so we always ask when we have a little team meeting we ask the universe to bring the right people forward and um that the right people may see our stories make sure your account's not private like if that's okay for you because you can reach a lot more people without a private account. Um, well, you know, 
I don't know. I really strongly believe in manifestation and we do ceremonies like all the time where we write down what we're asking for. The pen to paper thing is really profoundly huge. Um, it sounds wild, but like I've manifested some pretty crazy things into my life that um, you wouldn't, you just wouldn't believe like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's real. It's real. Like Abraham picks, like it's real, man. It's really it is real. real. I found all of this myself in, in, I want to say a similar way. We have different stories, but for me, when I started meditating and keeping gratitude journals and started, you know, asking for what I wanted in my life, whether rather than just waiting for it to happen for me, I noticed things started to change and it wasn't right away, but I started doing every day at last mm -hmm. thing at night, first thing in the morning, meditating. And doing yes. it consistently, consistency compounded. Yeah. And I had no experience in any of this either. I had no idea that I would be able to have any level of success in doing this. And it, it's not just this, it's whatever you want to do in life. What is your of why? Course. And you're yes. very clear on your why. And mm -hmm. that's, that's apparent because you are full in. You're all in. You're not yeah. like one foot in, one foot out. You're just all in and it shows. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, and also just to anybody that maybe is new to manifesting or to creating a ritual or um, that really the most important thing for like a, a really solid sadhana practice is to do it upon awakening. Mm -hmm. Upon awakening is the very most potent time to manifest, right? Even if that means you have to get up earlier than you'd like to, even you could start with 11 minutes or 22 minutes or whatever and grow that practice. But affirmation, you know, I had to change my entire neural pathways. I had to change my entire mind. Remember that I told myself for 34 years that I was a piece of shit, that I was unlovable, unwanted, not worthy. I was told by others for 34 years that I was a waste of skin, too damaged, too broken, no good, never gonna amount to anything right? Like I worked the last six and a half years to rewire my mind and to retrain my brain to believe that I am, that none of that is true, right? That I am beyond worthy. I put myself in a cloak of righteousness. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah, the morning time upon awakening, get yourself a little practice. It can be just your sacred little practice. And, um, man, it's, uh, yeah, I, I manifested my current partner, like over the full moon, over the course of 12 full moons, a whole year, I manifested a man, a moon man, I call him my moon man. Yeah, it's a, uh, you can, you can do anything, man, you can do anything. It's crazy. Money's not even real. So remember that money is just energy, just like age is energy. Money is not real. And the more you try to grip it and grasp it and hold it and control it, the less you have, you know what I mean? Like let life, life is the dance okay and we are the dancers you know what i mean let's ah uh, it's just it's so good like it's just so good i just i just am in such joy and gratitude and contentment and peace you know like i used to have a mind that was skid row you know skid row in my mind and now it's it's equanimous and a, and a safe sanctuary for me to play you know and it's all play it's all play right remember whatever you're doing make it sacred your sacred hands be present with whatever you're doing and and be all there and uh yeah shit gets so good man so good so true you know when when i started my healing journey karen everybody um you know i most of you know my story a brain cancer survivor and i think that was an accumulation of not just physical toxicity <laughs> but emotional, spiritual toxicity, all, all the types of toxicity you can think of. I was an addict also. Um, and uh, for me, really, where things started to turn around was when I, I started with hope. You know, you have to start somewhere. And for me, it was starting with hope that I could heal. And then it grew into a state of belief. Hope kind of transmutes into belief as you ascend through the up the ladder and and then from there, you get to a state of knowing, like you're determined, you just know it. And when you get to that state of knowing it, and it takes time because it is reprogramming that subconscious mind that runs like 95% of us. And uh, it's hard when you're undoing all of those years of 
I'm a piece of shit or I'm not worthy or I can't do this. I don't know how, like you say that you think that you're creating Mm -hmm. that regularly that's your program it's running and running and so you have to get down on the floor at 4 30 in the morning or whatever mm-hmm. it is and make it your first thing you do and the last thing you do yeah. bookend your life you know so that's that's something i can attest to myself i i feel that and i and it's a it's a process and it's a journey that you have to stick to because if you if i stop then i'm right back to not right back to i'm not going to go back to being that totally fucked up person that I was before, but you start to slide and you can slide a long way mm-hmm. down. If you don't bring yourself back, catch yourself being self-aware and sounds like you're very, I know you are, I mean, I know you, so you're very self-aware, you're very conscious and you're not the type of person that mixes up self-awareness with self-criticism, which I think is so important to, we're all human and we're all fallible you are actually very mindful yet at the same time, you're very compassionate with yourself, which is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love myself today. I love, I love myself. I love my life. And, um, and I love love, you know, I just, I just want everyone to, to be free and to feel love because at the core of who we all are is love, right? Like anything that takes us out of that vibration of love, out of alignment with love, it has to go. We have to be ruthless, right? We got to be ruthless. Like if something is disturbing our spirit, it's got to go, you know, it's just got to go. Life is the time is passing. We we think we have time. We don't, you know what I mean? We got to just, we got to create, we got to create the life of our wildest dreams, you know, and I really like agree what you said, Angelo, but when you say you can't, well, then you fucking can't, you know what I mean? Like, right. There's those lies from the ego. I'm not enough. I'll never have enough bullshit, right? We're one with life itself. We were formed in unified fields of love. We are divine expressions of love, right? So there's nothing we can't do. Nothing. You know, I used to mourn, you know, I used to mourn the, the old me, like, why did it take me so long to get here? You know, I don't do that anymore because I'm just grateful. I made it out at all. I don't care. You know what I mean? Yes. I didn't, I didn't get sober until I was much older. I don't give a shit. At least I'm not where I was. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean I have to stay where I'm at. Like, oh, this is good enough because at least I'm not homeless. Oh, this is good enough because at least I'm not jobless. No right? It doesn't have to stop there. I saw a guy on here though, that said he, he relapsed two weeks ago. I'm, I'm here for you. Re, you know, relapse is a part of my story. I relapsed at 13 months and, uh, and I blacked out and drove, I drove my car in a blackout and hit five people. Yeah. And I was sued and arrested and, uh, it was brutal. And I'm glad to say I never had to take a drink since. Right. That's so I'm 42 now. I got sober when I was 34, but the first 13 months I relapsed at 13 months. So if you're out there and you, uh, you just relapse, like, please message me, um, private message me, whatever. I'm here to walk with you and get you back into the sunlight of the spirit to get you back to the light, right? You're not alone. You're not a failure. You know what I mean? Like, this is what we do. We're alcoholic drug addicts. So it's the most oddest thing in the fucking world for us not to be drinking and using you know what i mean so be grateful that you get to try to come home one more time you know and it's not over because there's breath in your lungs and a beat in your heart and um there's a reason why you you know you're still here right so if you're still listening please reach out to me and karen i would if you don't mind i'd love to show your pictures because i you have some amazing transformation too we're, we're also mm. talking about physical wellness. Um, and I want to show the post that you put up from your, uh, you're on your Instagram, if that's all right. I want to share, um, her amazing transformation that she had with the Purium and everything she was doing. This is Karen from one day, day one to day 117. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. Crazy. Yeah, look at that. It's like two different people. And my skin got so tight and my, the elastin and everything just really, and no cellulite anymore. Like, yeah, see all the cellulite on my side ass there? It's all gone. All gone. That's all from processed food and fucking garbage. 
Mm -hmm. I was just treating my body like a dumpster. <laughs> yes. We've seen some pretty amazing transformations with people who have done, you know, gone organic and with the Perium program, it's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's great. I'm... So yeah, phenomenal story. You know, you're just a, a living miracle. Well, powerful woman. And um, I want to open it up. If anyone else wants to share or ask any questions for Karen, please, anything. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Any, I just anybody? want to say oh, thank there we go. you. Oh. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for sharing all of that. I definitely um, resonated a lot with, especially your your teenage years. I think um, you said you started like drinking at eleven, which was a couple years younger than me. But definitely went. I went through some crazy shit in my teenage years and was not sober for a waking moment which led to a car accident of my own, which was very life transforming. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say, except that was really powerful. And thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, really awesome. I started following you on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks, Bex. I'll follow you back. Travis, did you wanna speak? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, hi, Karen. Travis over here from Maine. Uh, Agent Johnny Green. Hey, everybody. So uh, glad to hold space with all of you in this very uh, spiritual moment we all got to share this last hour. Um, Karen, you're definitely super inspiring the way you just went all into this and the way you went all into your recovery. And really just phenomenal to see or to hear and, and to feel the story you're you were talking about because it's really a story of transformation and myself I I also had a car accident that caused me to stop drinking you know so grateful that I'm still alive to be here today you know like anything can happen at any time in our lives. So the, the fact that we can share this moment is just really powerful. So I'm glad to hear your story and I'm glad to see you just rising up and, and shining your light on us all. And, you know, just allowing us to feel comfortable in our own skin, you know, with, with our past. You know, because that's one of the hardest things I think we all go through is we have a past and we think we need to fix that past or we think we need to, we think we're bad because of our past and we need to somehow fix it. But instead, we just need to be and we just need to let it go and let everything go and um, just be content with where we're at. And I see that so much from your smile and the way you present yourself that you're just content and, and grateful to be alive. And that is inspiration to my heart. So thank you very much. It's so nice to um, share space with you. Totally. I love your page. I always, I creep all the time. Yeah. I love what you're doing in the world. It's amazing. Thanks, Travis. That's great, man. Hey, Karen. You have this ability to really um, embrace people without even speaking directly to them. It's like a hug through your voice. And I don't find that with a lot of individuals. Um, there's something that you do in the way you speak where you totally level the playing field out and really bring forward that idea that we really are all one. And that's quite profound. 
And I appreciate it so much because it helps me think more about how I speak. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. We lose Karen. No, are you, am I here? Am I back? Let me see. Uh, there is no picture I don't see, but I can hear you. Okay. I don't know. It's probably my internet. There you are. There you are. Thank, thank you, Mallory. Thank, thank you, sister. You. I love you. What a powerful hour here. We have the power hour. Um, if anyone else wants to jump in and, and chat, I think Karen might be frozen in, uh, in the, uh, ether or no, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. If I can jump um, on, this is like I said, at the beginning, this is the first time I've joined this zoom <clears throat> and I don't know. I feel like it was just like something pushed me to come here and now hearing Karen's story, like, I feel like, I feel like she was telling my story in a sense, like there's so many things I can relate to, except unfortunately for me, it wasn't a car accident that, you know, got me to, you know, wake up and move on. Like I had to later on go to a rehab <clears throat> and then that wasn't even enough. It was like a relapse after a rehab and it was a few years later before I finally, you know, got my shit together. And, um, you know, like I'm new here at Purium, obviously like two weeks or so, and everything's been about Purium, but just being in this meeting right now, like I'm seeing this whole other side, that's like this huge benefit. And, um, I don't know, it's, it's emotional for me, but thank you very much. I really, uh, meant a lot here and all that. So thank you. Thanks brother. I think Hasu, you want to speak? You can unmute yourself too. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, What's up, man? good evening to everybody. I'm, uh, pretty much, uh, new to this, um, Perium life. I was, um, kind of busy earlier with the, with the phone call and my phone call kind of dropped, but, uh, I feel like, uh, it is pretty inspirational coming from you and, um, from all you, all you guys that have, uh, share your stories. Um, Thanks for uh, letting letting me be here, sharing this moment as well with you guys. And um, no, I'm just uh, looking forward to keep learning and keep meeting people, mine alike that you know we look into uh, raise the vibration on a positive way in a abundant way in this planet right now, since there's a lot of um, uncertainty in these times. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you so much, brother. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Can I say something real quick? Absolutely. Cool. Hey, I'm Bianca. I'm in Portland. Um, I also want to second what Reed said. Um, just when Karen was telling her story about how much I resonated with a lot of things in there, and um, just like waking up and having the great awakening and you know mine was a psychotic break and also I was using at the same time so I think it would have come regardless but um just having that great awakening and then coming into the light and just you know um her story was so beautiful and um I related a lot to it and I just wanted to say thank you and yeah <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. I love all of you. We're all, <laughs> love we're you. all recovering from something. <laughs> I'm going to follow you too. So thank you so much. So blessed to meet you. Grateful for all of you guys. This has been a great hour. Thank you so much, Karen, for continuing to share your story. I think it's so important for us to tell our story every day in some capacity. 
Um, even if it sounds repetitive to us, there's people out there that need to hear it um, and to keep building on that story, you know? So I guess I can leave it there unless anyone wants to say anything, any final closing thoughts or words. I'm, I'm complete. Um, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. It's perfect because I'm just starting to lose service now. So I've been walking around trying to make it still work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a great call. Um, we're going to be doing these twice a week now, same time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So tell your friends, anybody that might be interested in sharing in this community, looking to build and, you know, get more people involved with this uh, amazing group. So thank you all. And um, thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Have a great day and um, have a great night. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, Peace. everyone. Right, thanks. Good night. Thank you all. Bye-bye, you guys, man. Take care. Thanks, Mark.